How's it going everybody? This is Cameron White with White Light Astrology and welcome to your 2020 year ahead horoscope for Libra, Sun and Rising. Thank you guys so much for being here and liking, sharing, commenting and subscribing. I love and appreciate every single one of you guys. In this video, we're going to be going over all of the major transits of 2020 by each quarter and how they'll be affecting you. And now while there is a lot of astrology happening next year, we're going to be briefly going over the major events so you guys have a general idea of what's going to be going on for you guys this year. Now, if you would like a more in-depth and specific analysis of what's going to be happening for you for 2020, please be sure to check out my website where you guys can purchase a year ahead reading from me where I'm going to be going over all of the specific transits and the big major events that are going to be affecting you specifically for your chart for 2020. And if you like this year ahead horoscope and you also like weekly horoscopes and monthly horoscopes, please be sure to check out my page and subscribe for all of the latest astrology info and updates. And also follow me on Twitter if you guys like to talk about astrology, engage with me as well as a bunch of other astrologers. If you're not on astrology Twitter, get on there already. And if you'd like to support me and my work and get access to exclusive content and knowledge about astrology, be sure to check out my Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash white light astrology. And now with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the horoscope. So before we actually go into 2020, we're ending 2019 off with Jupiter entering Capricorn. Now, Jupiter, of course, is the planet of good luck, fortune. It expands whatever it touches, wants you to have faith and belief in things. It is moving into Capricorn, which isn't the best thing ever because Jupiter finds itself in its sign of fall in Capricorn, which basically means it doesn't operate as well. It doesn't have the resources available. It doesn't have the resources available that it needs to do the best job that it can. And you kind of have to make do with what you have and make the best out of the situation given to you. And that's kind of like Jupiter and Capricorn's MO. However, Jupiter is going to be in Capricorn for the whole sign of or for the whole year of 2020. And it will be in your fourth house, which is going to be pretty positive because I'm sure with you Libra Risings, you've had plenty of experience of the Saturn Pluto going through your fourth house. But as Jupiter goes through your fourth house, this is expanding and bringing some hope and some faith and letting you work with at least what you have when it comes to your home life, your family life, your living situation, your private life, and your parents. There's a lot to be addressed here this year. But then we are actually starting 2020 off with the Saturn-Pluto conjunction in Capricorn. And if you haven't heard about this yet, it's a very big deal. It's a very big transit. I would recommend looking into this for your uh, on your own time for yourself. However, a good way to explain it very simply would be the, well, for one, this has been going on since like technically 2008, but really big since 2000 and the end of 2017 when Saturn moved into Capricorn. So it's not anything overnight that you're not already expecting, but Saturn conjoining Pluto, the Saturn, the planet of, you know, limitations of rules, uh, discipline, authority, constriction, as it is in Capricorn and conjoining Pluto, the planet of like destruction and death. This is kind of getting a grip and getting a handle on all of the immense changes you could have had in your life regarding your family situation, your living space, your private life. Saturn conjoining Pluto is kind of getting a grip and handling everything that's been causing you chaos and taking responsibility and doing something different with it. And that's kind of how we start 2020. And a lot of that theme is going to drag out for the rest of the year, but we're beginning it off with addressing the main issue. But then as we move forward, we get into the first of three Mercury retrogrades that we'll be having this year. The first one being in Pisces. Now, Mercury retrogrades are a time to reflect Reflect, review, rethink, re-strategize. It will be in the sign of Pisces where this is Mercury's detriment sign. It's kind of hard for Mercury to do its job here. So this may be a very confusing time. There will definitely be some miscommunications. But what's going to be happening is that this is happening in your sixth house. So this has to deal with reviewing or rethinking your habits, your health, what you're doing every single day, your employment, where exactly it is that you find yourself putting into your routine. And this is where you'll start to change that up a little bit more. But then as we move forward, one of the big things that we have going on this year is Saturn is going to ingress into Aquarius. So Saturn's been in Capricorn in your fourth house, you know, kind of doing a lot of stuff to your family and your living situation and bringing problems there. Now Saturn's going to be moving into your fifth house. Now before you freak out over this, Saturn is the planet of limits, of structures, of barriers, consolidation, things being stopped and walls. 
However, Saturn's the planet of being an adult, of having some authority, of taking you know responsibility and having discipline and putting in some hard work and commitment towards things. And as Saturn moves into Aquarius, its other home sign, Saturn will still be comfortable here, but this goes from Capricorn where we're focused on the tangible and the concrete into the idea of things, into the spirit of things. And the biggest thing with Aquarius is that it's like the where do we want to connect and where do we want to disconnect? What are the ideas of truth that we operate from and that and how we use these ideas for a sense of structure in our lives? Now, Saturn is going to be going into your fifth house, which is all about love, romance, children, arts, creativity, hobbies, anything that you can create that you find joy with that's an extension of your unique self. Where Saturn, with Saturn going into Aquarius, this is where you're going to have more responsibilities, more of a discipline, more walls, more barriers to go through here, but at the same time, more hard work to take on. But then as we end the first quarter of 2020, we're going to be having Jupiter conjoin Pluto. Now, like I said before, Jupiter and Capricorn is really about how you can utilize what you have to the best of your abilities. And as Jupiter conjoins Pluto, this might be revolutionizing or changing your belief that you have about stuff. Now, Jupiter, of course, the planet of belief and faith conjoining Pluto might bring an eerie, irky type change to what you actually believe but this is the point in the time where you kind of have to believe with whatever the hell that you have to use is going to work for you because it will at the end of the day once we get to later on this year but as we jump into the second quarter we're starting it off with the nodes entering gemini and sagittarius now the north node of course is uh our direction the rahu like the dragon's head the area that we're wanting to move towards and what's kind of calling out to us now, as the North Node moves into Gemini, this is pulling us in the direction towards understanding, towards educating, towards getting information, receiving information, and focusing more on what we know versus with the South Node moving into Sagittarius, what our beliefs are, what we are envisioning, what we hope to have there, and where our faith lies. This is turning the energy from focusing on what information is actually available and what do we actually know versus what we want to believe. Now, this is starting eclipse season in the beginning of May as well, so you will have a big focus pulled on this area, and this is happening in your third and your ninth house. Now, the North Node is moving into Gemini into your ninth house, which the ninth house is all about spirituality, religion, belief, far distance travel, higher education, publishing. And as the North Node goes through Gemini and goes through this area, you're going to start receiving more information and understanding more of what you believe. And as the South Node goes through the third house, which is the third house is all about what you already know, how to utilize yourself, uh, teaching, learning, as well as siblings and neighbors. And as the South Node goes through here, this is where you're going to be kind of letting go of what you've already done and what you already know how to do and start focusing on learning and accepting more things, learning better things, uh, getting and more new information and doing what you can with that. But then we have Venus retrograding in Gemini, which is one of the bigger highlights for this year. Now, Venus, of course, is the planet of love and value, money. She wants you to connect to the things that you want and indulge and embrace them. But Venus going through Gemini, she's looking for stimulation. She's looking to be social. She's looking to understand because that's what she wants to do. However, as Venus retrogrades in Gemini, this is a value shift. This is not getting the stimulation with what you were doing before and having to find something new that's more stimulating, that's more exciting, that puts you at a more happier place. Now, with Venus retrograding in Gemini, this is happening in your ninth house of your beliefs, of your sense of faith, of spirituality, of what you know and what you're learning. And so as Venus retrogrades through here, this is going to be a big time on reflecting on what you need to learn or what you need to believe, what you want to believe, and connect yourself more to the things that do stimulate you, that do bring you joy, because the things that you were doing before aren't going to bring them during this time. But this is going to be a good time to really start investing into new ideas of what you can believe about yourself and how you can love yourself even more than you already do. But then in the second quarter, we get the second Mercury retrograde of the year. This time, this one's happening in Cancer. Now, let's talk about Mercury retrogrades again. We're talking about rethinking, reviewing, replanning, re-strategizing. And this is Mercury. We're talking about communicating ideas. Uh, this is the sign of Cancer where we're talking about nurturing, protecting. We're talking about addressing the needs and the necessities. But this is happening in your 10th house of your career, of your public vocation 
location. So you might see some ideas change around this time with what you're doing with your career, or maybe have some miscommunications in this area. But there is going to be a general focus on saying what needs to be said when it comes to the terms of your career, whether that's in the workplace or maybe changing up what exactly it is that you do for a living. Then as we start the third quarter and get to the halfway point of 2020 is when Saturn is going to retrogress and move back into Capricorn. Yes, Saturn is not done in Capricorn just yet. And as it goes back in, those themes of responsibilities and wanting to deal more with love, children, sex, all the fun stuff at the fifth house, it goes back to the fourth house where you have to, again, handle obligations, handle duties, handle anything that was going on in your fourth house that you might have left astray. This is where the walls, the barriers, and the restrictions come back into this area and you've got to deal with them and address them one final time. But then just a few weeks after that, we have Mars entering its shadow. And at this point, Mars will be in Aries where it's very energized and wanting to do a lot. Mars is a malefic planet, so it likes to sever and cut, but it is a very energizing planet, so it shows Shows us where we're pouring our energy in. It is in its home sign of Aries where it's going to start feeling very energized. It's it's at home. It's in its comfort. It's in its comfortable place. However, Mars is going to start slowing down once it enters shadow, and this is where our energy might feel a little bit reclusive. We might not have as much energy as we thought we did. And the biggest thing is, as Mars goes into Aries and starts to go into its shadow during this time, Mars will be in your seventh house. Now, the seventh house is all about relationships, whether that's personal, professional, intimate, you know, casual, as long as it's you and someone else being addressed. And as Mars goes through this area, you might be wanting to search and seek out more relationships, but you might be finding yourself slowing that ball down a little bit and finding some more roadblocks and problems in this area. But then three days after that, Venus actually moves out of its shadow. So where Venus was in your ninth house and you were believing more, learning more, Venus starts to move forward where it's really excited about what it's learning, what it's creating, and is going now on a journey of what it can do with that information and what discover or and what you discover that's going to lead you to a new path. But then from about August 4th through about August 27th, that's when Mars, as it's slowing down, going through its shadow phase, is going to be squaring Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn. This is where you're going to see a lot of the limitations where Mars is in Aries in your seventh house. You're wanting to apply more in relationships, wanting to do more in relationships, but it's being held back by all of the obligations and responsibilities and duties you have in your fourth house, in your family life, in your private life that you've got to address. And so it may be a little bit frustrating where you're wanting to, you know, focus more on relationships, do more with relationships, but what's getting in the way is whatever you have to address at the center or the root of what your problems are, and that can deal with uh, living issues, family issues, where you're living, how you center yourself. But then we end the third quarter with Mars actually stationing retrograde. And this is that point where, where you're finding those conflicts and finding those battles where you can't seem to move forward. As Mars retrogrades and moves back, you kind of have to move backwards and handle all these obligations and these responsibilities, get over these walls and jump through these hoops that Saturn, Pluto, and Jupiter are kind of giving you in order to kind of keep moving forward. But then we start the fourth quarter, the main event of the year where the most things are happening. And we start off with Mars now retrograde about to square Saturn and Jupiter and Pluto again. And like I said before, this is where you start cutting those ties. This is where you start addressing issues. This is where you start taking some action. You start doing things differently to get a different result. But once that's over, we're actually going to have Mercury station retrograde for the third and final time in Scorpio. Now, this Mercury retrograde is going to be very similar to what the Mercury retro what retrograde was in Scorpio in 2019. Now, of course, Mercury retrogrades are a time to rethink, revisit, review, and this is in the sign of Scorpio. We're talking about the hidden things, the darker things. So there might be some secrets that rise out and truth starts to become revealed, but what's important is that this is happening in your second house of money. So this is going to be a time to revisit, review, and rethink where exactly it is you're investing your money or your physical possessions and where they're going. But once we get into November, that's when Jupiter's going to come back and conjoin Pluto for the third and final time. And like I talked about in the beginning of this video, Jupiter making the best out of whatever situation that you had, as Jupiter conjoined Pluto, it was kind of like, you know, having to fight, you know, like a, like an army with just a stick. 
and that can be kind of daunting at first, but as Jupiter comes back to conjoin Pluto, as long as you remain faithful and you remain trusting and really just utilizing whatever it is that you had on you, you're going to see that big change that really comes into your life regarding your fourth house and your family life and your living situation. And utilizing the best of what you had is going to create a very dramatic change and result in your life that I believe will definitely be beneficial. And what's even more important is right after Jupiter conjoins Pluto, the next day, Mars stations direct. So Mars, you know, was cutting all these ties, handling all these obligations and problems. Mars stations direct and begins to finally move forward again, where it can actually go beyond this stuff that it was kind of having to fight and just keep moving forward without having to deal with any of these past problems that could have arose. But then we get to the second set of eclipses, this time with the focus on Sagittarius. And like I said before, when Venus retrograded in your ninth house, this was kind of reviewing and changing your beliefs about things and kind of having a value shift in what you want to learn and understand. And as we get to eclipse season and Sagittarius season of 2020 is when you're going to start to learn to let go of maybe the past way that you used to do things or what you believed was the best way to do things now that you know that there's other ways to do things. And I think that's going to be the most important note is for you guys specifically is kind of looking back and reflecting and going, that worked for me then, but it's not going to work for me now. And I have to let go of that and utilize what I've learned now that will work for me and actually put that into uh, practice. But then of course we end 2020 with the big bang, the big show, the final, the, the big finale. And that is Jupiter and Saturn both moving into Aquarius and conjoining each other. Now, just like the Saturn-Pluto conjunction, Jupiter-Saturn conjunctions are a very big deal. I would definitely recommend looking into them on your own time because I don't have enough time to explain the very small, like the intricate parts of it of why it's so important. But as Jupiter moves into Aquarius, Jupiter, the planet that's expanding whatever it touches, that's wanting to grow into new things, it's going into the sign of Aquarius where it can network, it can connect, it can breathe and get out of stuffy Capricorn. And it is going to be going into your fifth house of love of, of romance, of creation, where you can have more time and have more freedom in this area. But with more gifts and more things being received towards you comes more responsibility. And that's where Saturn comes into play. Because so as Saturn goes into Aquarius and goes into your fifth house, that's where, you know, where you're wanting to create more things in this area is going to take more responsibility from your end. And that's how we end 2020 and go into 2021. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for being here, liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. I love and appreciate every single one of you guys. If you want a more detailed and specific analysis of what's going on for you for 2020, please go to my website and book a reading with me. I'd love to look over your whole chart with you and let you know what's going on for you. With that being said, thank you guys so much for being here and I'll see you next time.